Okay, welcome back. So, uh, having uh, uh, adjudicated my puppies uh, early in the morning, as usual, uh, I'm now back and ready to uh, show you what's going on here. Um, first of all, I've implemented in OBS uh, the software, I should say, I'm viewing in OBS the software called um, uh, Droidcam X. At least on the phone, the Android phone, it's called Droidcam X. On the uh, computer, it's just Droidcam. On the Windows laptop, it's Droidcam. So, the Droidcam software is now viewing the phone um, like the phone is another camera. And I remember I was talking about having to wear the headset. I'm doing that because of the better audio quality. Now, I could, yes, I could use Womic uh, just without having to use this headset. Or uh, Droidcam X, they all have audio channels uh, in their protocols for uh, uh, wireless communication to the laptop. Sure, but that's ambient. Um, I wish, actually, there probably is. Uh, a way to implement a microphone that is a better quality than well I'm sure there is than it, what's in the phone because I've seen little you know USB-C uh, microphones you can plug in um, to a Android phone or a, a device that has the C USB-C but herein lies an interesting uh, fact um, <clears throat> using the phone and any, any, dev any device, you're going to run down the battery. Okay? So what you do, here's what you do. What you do is you get a dongle, USB-C, that splits to USB-A, normal USB port, and uh, USB-C. Why? So that you it's a special kind of dongle it's a charging dongle so you plug in a USB a typical USB cable thing and that's one channel protocol yada yada audio video okay basically it's almost you know what I think it is I maybe forgot this I think it's a on-the-go cable but at any rate uh, so you can plug a webcam into it yes so at any rate I'm plugging in my headset into that dongle, and which is also capable, although not at this particular moment, of charging the phone at the same time so the phone battery will never run down. Okay? And that di same dongle is used with the, wait for it, GoPro. Okay? So you can charge the GoPro battery as you are using an external microphone. Uh, yeah. At least, I think that's the theory. Did I test that the other day? <coughs> John? Uh, the fictional John in the fictional studio uh, control room? Did I do that the other day? I'm not sure. I think I did when I was testing the uh, GoPro cameras for the convention. Anyway. So, yes, I know. I, here we are. What you're looking at is the Android phone, uh, Droidcam software inside OBS. And um, it is zoomed in, pinch, zoom, because that works in Droidcam, uh, to a manner graphic that's on the map. And you can see our figures. Our hero figure, for instance, uh, where's my pointer? Okay, I lost my pointer. Um, Okay, I'll get out pointer number two. Um, our hero figure, this is our lord. This is the player's representation on the game table. Um, it could be anything, right? But we try, try and, oops, we try and choose uh, the best possible, well, we, just a nice looking figure. Right? It's a knight. I think it's a Teutonic knight. Uh, anyway, so that's him. That's the Lord. That's the player uh, of of the the green side. I think it's green. 
uh, hence the reason he's mostly painted green. And here's one of his knights. Okay, uh, again, it, it's actually, uh, what is that, um, ho Knight's Hospitaller? Um, anyway, so uh, that's one of his knights. So a knight is a value 5. The lord himself is a value 8, but you never really want to put him in combat, because if you do, he might get killed and, well, not killed, but captured and put in one of the, you know, the Bestly Priory or the uh, Carse Abbey. Um, well, I forget which one. Here's a little icon identifying his standard, you know, his banner. And he's got, uh, actually, this stand has got two archers on it. And so it's actually kind of deadly. Because why? Because they fire two spaces, right? So in the Excalibur game, you move on these on the roads. This all, you, you, all you do is move on the roads. And here we have the road mileposts. So with archers, you can fire two distance, right? You fire one milepost and then to another. And I know it looks like, well, why can't I fire across there? Well, you just can't. All right, so uh, they would be able to fire one, two, okay? Now, you'll also notice that on this uh, really cool 3D printed holder is not just the army itself, uh, but a D12. And the D12 is uh, being used as a summary of the total values, uh, the total value of that army for easy reference. And I, when we came up with this for the 3D printing, I'm like, you know what? That's really the better thing to do because, well, you don't need it, right? Because, you know, you look at the figure and you know that, okay, archers are value 2, 4, and then actually, wait a minute. That's wrong. Uh, 2, 4, and then 5 is a total of 9, not 11. All right. So that's the value of that army if it gets into melee. Um, how, <clears throat> so, okay, so let's take him away. We remember that it, obviously you can have peasant value one, men at arms value three. These guys are value two. So I'll take that away. All right, so here's our nice little 3D printed buildings. Right. This is uh, this is the manor called Kars, just for our example. And this little die that's on here, this represents the value of that manor. So you don't need to look at the card for Kars to know uh, its value. And how, why is it six? Because right now there's no other improvements. There's no water mill. There's no beehives. There's no forest reeve. Well, actually, Kars has no forest. I think it has no forest. Um, and uh, it only has fields and plowed fields and open meadows. Uh, so that's where you would hypothetically put the beehive marker, yada, yada. It doesn't really matter. It's just pretty looking stuff. It's, that's why we use this. It's an awesome, very attractive map. But it has some practical realities to it. Uh, you'll notice that over here, we can't really, let's move our, I think, if I read this correctly, this type of a border indicates that's where the manor stops. Okay, so this forest is not part of Kars. Uh, and I'll look at the card, but I'm pretty sure, uh, because that's what the card details, how many pastures, how many fields, how many forests, how many water uh, tracks or uh, water rights are possible. Um, I think it stops right here, so this forest doesn't belong to Kars. It belongs to the next, it belongs to the next um, manor over. So I think that's what the, it's kind of a reddish border. Uh, okay, so that's Kars. Three buildings, two, four, six, right? Hence the reason for the value of the die. So the players can see how uh, much value every property is by the value of the die. Wouldn't it be interesting if Monopoly did this? If on the game table you had some kind of a symbol that showed everybody how much a property was, yeah, then you wouldn't even have to look at the cards. So that's an interesting innovation. And well, actually, these are colored die. Um, and why is it green? Because it's owned by the green team. See, that's how we're, ooh, we're smart. That's how we are uh, making this game 
uh, visually, uh, how, do, how it works visually. Okay, I was just concerned I wasn't recording after all this time. So hold on. Check, check, check. No, no, it looks pretty good. Really? Okay, let's turn it down a little bit. I think maybe the audio is pretty, pretty high. Okay. Because um, the microphone's right in front of my face. Okay, so that's the gist of it. Uh, you see the pastures, right? You see the fields, um, and you see a little pond. Doesn't really mean anything. And the little buildings, the 3D buildings that we printed. Wait, go back. So again, right, the pond, the building, our hero, and and so on and so forth. So these green blocks that are on the roads, you would you know if you really want to know where it is, then just use the die of the of our little army marker. Put the die on there. Okay? So if that looks weird, turn it around face this way and put the die on the marker so that you know that's where the marker is that's one way of doing it you can lift it off see and there it is underneath okay um okay so there's where you are and and that is basically the the uh, how you uh adjudicate or manage the property at the end of the year this value is hasn't been improved yet let's assume that no improvements happen and it's value six now let's say uh, if it gets pillaged, you take a building away, all right? Instead of um, putting a pillage marker down on the game table, you can take a building away, but I'm not sure that'll work. That's one thing we haven't done yet um, because uh, buildings are just, they should just be there, right? They should just be, they are what they are. And, wait a second. Oh, I know, they look like little dog houses, don't they? They're so adorable. Um, okay, so uh, we'll use a pillage marker when, when pillaging happens to show a reduction. And of course, you know, say it gets pillaged, I forget the rules, but I think you roll a D6 or something like that, and it, whatever it affects is, is what the income is reduced to. And when the next winter comes along, uh, you go to count up all your manners and their values, this guy will be a three. And then I think it, um, it returns, uh, well, if uh, certain things have been destroyed, they have to be repurchased, like a water mill, beehives, and so on. If those get destroyed by the pillaging, then yeah, you gotta, you know, bring them back. Uh, okay, so there we are. Uh, everything seems to be working well, and um, we'll move on to an actual engagement now. You know what? Let me do this. That's zooming out. All right. Let's go in a little bit. All right. So here you can see uh, we've got an opponent. It is uh, by the color of the figures and the fact that there's no banner. Uh, it's a peasant army. And it's uh, the orange or the light colored dice represent no affiliation as yet. So we do that uh, to provide us a, a way of having a non-player character involved in the game. So these could just be like, you know, free radicals, right? <clears throat> so these guys are there. Um, they're basically going to be a target of uh, everybody else. And it's essentially uh, also representing, by the way, uh, the, the default defense force for any unowned manor. And that's what this is. It's an unowned manor, and that's the default setting, three peasant infantry. So their value is three, as the dice shows. All right. We'll come back. We'll talk about, uh, and we'll demonstrate some activity and how to conduct combat. It's just super simple. Um, it's a D6 situation, uh, and, and so on and so forth. So we'll come back. <sighs> that was a lot longer than I expected that uh, episode to be. So 